I've been following and researching the paleo diet for the last 30 days. And what I've learned is not what I expected. I thought I would lose some weight and improve my health by eating like my paleolithic ancestors. But after a few weeks, I'm left wondering, is the paleo diet really one of the best diets for improving your health and losing weight? Is this really how our ancestors ate? Or is this just another nonsense fad diet with a lot of marketing hype to back it up? I've spent the last month trying to uncover the answers to these questions, and I'll share what I've found, what my 30-day results were, and what I'd probably do differently. Also, you can decide whether or not the paleo diet is a good option for you. The main claim of the paleo diet is that humans should only eat foods that existed before farming and agriculture. If you could hunt it or gather it 10,000 years ago, then it must be healthy for you. And the reason we see modern day diseases like obesity and type two diabetes is because humans shouldn't be eating processed foods or anything else resulting from farming. On the surface, this seems to make logical sense because the paleo diet focuses on whole, real foods that are found in nature. You can eat free range meats, wild-caught fish, eggs, vegetables, fruits, nuts, and seeds, and you eliminate all processed foods. But the paleo diet takes it even further and eliminates some of these whole real foods as well. Even though grains and dairy products are considered to be whole foods, you're not allowed to eat them because they're byproducts of modern agriculture. Theoretically, a little less straightforward is the elimination of legumes like beans, lentils, and soy. And if you're interested in learning more about this strange elimination, check out the video on Dr. Gundry's plant paradox diet linked in the description because it's nearly the same as the paleo diet. But debating whether or not grains, dairy, and beans beans are paleo doesn't really matter in the end. Because when I started looking at the research and using just a tiny little bit of common sense, I learned that the paleo diet might not be all it claims to be. Here's just a few of the more surprising things I found out while researching the paleo diet that it probably gets wrong. Claiming that grains and legumes were not part of our ancestral diet probably isn't true. There is evidence that Paleolithic humans ate grains, beans, and possibly even flour long before the invention of agriculture. We have the wild ancestors of wheat and barley and rye. People were eating these 10,000 years before the origins of agriculture. Because the truth is that if these foods were growing and available, they were likely eaten, which brings up an even more important point. Paleolithic humans ate whatever food they could hunt or gather at any given time, which depended greatly upon where they lived in the world, what the season was, and what foods were naturally available in those areas. So while the paleo diet allows you to eat fruits, vegetables, and other plant-based foods, you wouldn't have found most of those outside of specific areas and seasons. If you didn't live in the tropics, you wouldn't have had bananas, avocados, and a lot of other fruits. Nuts and seeds are only available in the fall, and there's not a lot of fruits or vegetables to be found in the winters. So it's very likely that our ancestors didn't eat a lot of plant-based foods year-round, which leaves us with meat, because animals were available all year long. Probably, but they couldn't store it in a freezer or keep leftovers in their fridges. You can't eat paleo unless you're gonna go run around with a loincloth and a spear or some arrows and go catch some wild meat, which doesn't exist. So unless they captured or killed animals every single day, 
it's very likely that they had periods of time where they didn't eat anything. We would call that intermittent fasting today, a term that we've invented simply because we can literally eat whatever food we want, whenever we want. But because our ancestors didn't have refrigerators or preservatives, or packaging to make foods shelf stable, they ate what was available and they ate it when it was fresh. The Hadza, these Tanzanians who go out looking for meat all the time, they often come back without meat because it was too hard to catch something. Uh, and they eat a lot of tubers and get a lot of fiber. If they couldn't get meat, they probably supplemented with whatever plants they could find. And understanding this basic premise helps us to weed through all of the marketing nonsense. Because common sense tells us our ancestors didn't have all the paleo-friendly products that we have. There weren't salad dressings or condiments. They weren't eating paleo pancakes or paleo pasta. They weren't snacking on grain-free paleo chips. These foods may use paleo-friendly ingredients and they may sound healthy because they slap paleo-friendly on the label, but you can't hunt or gather these foods in nature. These are merely another breed of processed foods that big food companies market to us so they can profit from another diet trend, which also means that a lot of healthy foods included on the paleo diet were not eaten by our ancestors. They didn't have almond butter. They weren't milking nuts. They weren't eating dairy-free paleo cheese. They weren't making superfood smoothies with their ninja blenders to drink after their CrossFit workouts. They didn't even have chicken coops where they could collect eggs every day. And even beyond all of this, the one thing that ruins the entire premise of the paleo diet is that most of the allowed foods on this list wouldn't have been available during Paleolithic times. Nearly every single food that we eat today is a byproduct of farming and agriculture because almost every fruit and vegetable has been cultivated and bred specifically to create the products that we eat today. They're all the same species. The only difference is they're different cultivars. We've selectively bred the same species to produce the kind of food that we like best. These are human inventions. And they look nothing like they used to look thousands of years ago. The same is true of most animal products, from poultry to beef, to pork and eggs. Perhaps the closest thing our ancestors had was wild game and wild caught fish, and even those have likely been altered as a result of our impact on this earth. All of this means our ancestral diet probably looked nothing like the modern day paleo diet. And while the paleo diet seems to make a logical argument, that argument falls apart when it's placed under a microscope. But there are still some important takeaways that we can use because there's pretty good evidence that the paleo diet is a good way to improve your health as well as lose some weight but not because it returns us to our ancestral diet. It's much simpler than that. For most people, the paleo diet is a huge step in the right direction because it has you remove added sugars, refined carbohydrates, and highly processed foods. When you eat real, unprocessed foods, you get more nutrition with less calories, which means you'll probably eat less food and you'll eat less often all without feeling hungry all of the time. So while the paleo diet may be a great option for a lot of people, it's probably more strict and complicated than it really needs to be. Because most experts agree, the real reason the paleo diet works is because it has you eliminate processed foods, which is the same common principle that every other respectable way of eating has in common with the paleo diet. Most mainstream diets that have been shown to work for long-term weight loss and improved health, eliminate processed foods and have you eat more real food. So is the paleo diet really the best diet for humans? Aside from the fact that we literally can't eat like our ancestors used to eat, the truth is there's no singular paleo diet. There are many, many paleo diets. People, when they spread out across the world, colonize the continents, 
They ate local foods, and of course, they were extremely variable. So when we speak about Paleolithic diets, it's very important to speak of them in the plural. Saying that any diet is the right way to eat is never going to be 100% true. There are ways of eating that are generally better for most people, and paleo might be one of them. But most people doesn't mean everyone. And if you're thinking about trying the paleo diet, I think it's more important to focus on what we do know about how our ancestors ate. Their diet likely consisted of single ingredient whole foods, which they ate fresh, in season, and when available. We evolved to eat whole foods in their complete package with their fiber and their roughage and everything. Your foods are not just the sum of the calories and the vitamins. Now, I think it's also pretty likely that they went for longer periods of time in between meals, which is why intermittent fasting in combination with eating less processed foods can be such an important component of your weight loss and health goals. And there's one last thing that you should consider. Whether or not the paleo diet is a good choice for you depends greatly on your current eating habits. If you're currently eating the standard American diet, which consists of about 70% processed foods, you'll likely lose weight when you switch to the paleo diet. But if you already eat relatively healthy, you could actually gain weight on the paleo diet like I did. I gained a total of five pounds in just the first couple of weeks on a paleo diet. And there's several reasons why this happened. And I've outlined them in this video so you can avoid these common weight loss mistakes. But in the end, you eat whole foods, you avoid processed foods, and you eat it in the freshest and most natural state that you can.